Hello, y'all. Hello. Fucking video. Welcome to a fucking part two of this Crash Bandicoot insane podcasty type thing. I am the Stimpy Land, aka Mr. McManus, aka Dr. Butt, aka Dr. D, aka Monstro. And I'm joined by Paul, aka Paul ED, aka a boy. You to call me Fierce the Bandit. Yeah. All my friends like to call me Fierce. The bandit. Fears, Fears Morgan, Fears Brosnan, yeah. and then we have uh, Andrew. Hello. Aka, A2 Rob. Yeah, A2 go Bob. by that name. Or Lonely Spaceman on Twitter, right? Lonely uh, Spachemin? Uh, no. You don't go by Dr. Leo Spaceman on Twitter? Shout out to anybody it's... that got that reference. Anyway, this is Crash 2, part 2 of the insane. Trigger Glee, and we're gonna do our little talking over this. So, what do you think of this opening cutscene? Because we don't have Vicky Winners here anymore, which I know some people are in serious, uh, seriously distraught about that. But I'm not too upset. I'm glad that Debbie Derryberry's doing the voice instead of uh... Debbie Derryberry's the best Coco in my opinion. Yeah, and she's a shit posting god on Twitter. She's so fun. I know, and she she's a shit posting god. She sounds way better than that bimbo that did it in Crash Two, where she's like. Crash! Crash! We got a for me! Was that the only time she voiced Coco? That was the only voice acting that that woman's ever- I mean, to my knowledge, that's the only shit that she's ever done. Like, I looked at, like, what else she done, and nothing noteworthy. It's like, she did Coco in Crash 2, and she was terrible at it. Where in Crash 3, there's no voice acting for Coco. When did, and then in when did CTR, Vicky Winters, they just got some random person. When did what happened? Vicky Winters start? Voice Vicky Winters just did Crash 2. That was Coco and Crash 2, and that was it. Oh, okay. And there's a guy we're not gonna name because I don't want to be I don't want to be calling people out, but he's like, this, he's got this weird fetishistic obsession with Vicky Winters, and it doesn't make any sense to me. It's real creepy. I think it's just strange more than anything else. It's just weird. It's like, why have all people to be fixated on? Would it be Coco's terrible fucking voice actor from Crash 2? That's not important. We got Crash 2. We got these weird talking head cutscenes. Cortex looks Cortex very weird yellow. in these cutscenes. Yeah. Because I think that was a mistake that they made in uh, Twin Sanity or Wrath of... I think it started in Wrath of Cortex. It started with Wrath of Cortex. Was... Wrath of Cortex because that game was shit. And then Twin Sanity just followed up because that game is the worst thing ever made by humans. No, uh, but... I gotta make this joke no. real quick. They turned him into a Simpson character. XD. There you yeah, go. but uh... It's like, because if you notice, in Crash 1, he's just, like, regular skin tone. In Crash 2 and 3, he's, like, kind of yellowish. And then in Wrath of Cortex, he's just fucking yellow. And he's like, okay, he's just yellow now. Yeah, it's kind of odd how they went with that for the remake. Anyway, this is the first level, Birdle Woods. This run is going to be 100%, going to be getting all of the gems, all of the crystals, and all of the relics. And there will be no load times, of course, because they're fucking shit. And there will be no deaths in this run. Obviously, I died plenty Yay! of times. Yes, I died plenty of times in the in the attempt to get you know these deathless runs. But eventually, I did do it. I did it for every level, and it was a pain in the ass. Boy, going professional now. Yeah, I know. We out here. Whoa. Because this. I really like this. This was like the cool shit in Crash Two. Crash Two was like the most cryptic. You know what I mean? Like, Crash One. Crash One was cryptic, but it was like stupid. You know, where it was just, like, a bunch of weird shit that you never would have thought to do. And Crash 3 was, like, had less secrets. Except these two random secrets that are, like, the weirdest out-of-place things. But, like, aside- but I don't know. Crash 2 was cool. It was, like, cryptic. It's, like, Crash 2 lacked a lot of, like, straightforward gems. There was always, like, some small series of boxes or some secret that you needed to access that, you know, was hiding the gem. Like, in this case, it was, you know, body- body slamming that, uh, like, section of the floor to get to this area. You know, because it contains the, the nitros and the crate that blows them up. And then, of course, there's also, you know, the, the cool little hidden gem. Which they tell you, which you won't see because there's no load screens. But they tell you in the, uh... In the, in the load screens, there's hints for all of the levels. And they added one that says, be kind to the boxes in this level and it gives you a secret gem. Which, like, I think is fine. Because some people were saying that they didn't like that some of the hints were just, like, you know, given. I think some of the hints were dumb or, like, you know, kind of redundant. But that one I'm fine with. It's, like... There's also... 
the hint where if you've already beaten this level, or you've already gotten the uh, box gem, and you go to the end, it'll say... Out of zero box. Yeah, like yeah. out of zero. So that that's a big hint. I never picked up on that hint back Exactly, in the day. exactly. I didn't either. I never understood that. I'm like, what? Why? It's not that I didn't understand this, it's that I never noticed. I thought it was like some weird glitch. I, I had no clue why that was happening. I never thought anything of it until eventually. I mean, to be fair, why would you replay the level again if you've already gotten all, everything? I like this little hoo-ha that they do uh, when, yes, when you got that, invincibility. Those who and ha's were taken from the Skylander soundtrack for the Fump and Wumper Island level. Cool. Is that where it came the from? The whole island or level dances to the hoo and ha. Interesting. See, yeah. Kind of like the Goombas in New Super Mario Brothers. They're just like, ba, ba. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. So it does that, music. like... There's a part in that Skylanders game where they jump to the music. That's some cool the stuff. statues do. Like the Tiki statues. His little dance was changed. He doesn't, like, hump the air now. He sort of, like, runs in place. Which, I like, I'm fine with. I was gonna say, anyway, we're talking about just the remake in general. I like the remake a lot. I think I was talking to Pat about this when we recorded our part. And I'll talk about me and Pat's uh, segment of the recording in a bit. But, uh, what was I just saying? I'm stupid and forget what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, so the remake, I was saying I like this game a lot. There are people that say that this game is bad, and I certainly don't think so. But it has a lot of problems. And I would say, and I don't know if you guys agree, but I think that the remake is inferior to the PS1 originals. And I think the biggest, like, decline in quality goes between Crash 1 and its remake. Which I definitely know is not the popular opinion. Because a lot of people prefer Crash 1 due to the quality of life improvements. But I think while they fixed some problems in Crash 1's remake, uh, they introduced other problems. But I don't want to talk about that too much because you could just watch Crash 1's part if you want to know more about that. Uh... I don't but watch yeah. that because I'm not in that. But we got but there's Pat Strikes Back. Who? <laughs> exactly. Never heard of him. Yeah, that's a shame. He's pretty. He's he's okay. He's not that good. He's okay. But we're not gonna talk about him right now. Just okay. No, what would you say? P like, do you prefer Insane or PS One? Who's gonna go first? You Either go one first. Of you take. Pussy. <laughs> okay. Paul, you go first. Okay. Well, to me, it's a half and half situation. Some things the original does better, some things the remake does better. Can you cite some examples? Well, as you mentioned before, the quality of life improvements in Crash 1. Like better Makes saving, bonus round Better shit. saving, I like the fact that you can die and still get the gem. I also like that they still kept the original rules for the colored gems to add that extra challenge. So that's what you basically do in 2 and 3 anyway. Yeah. You gotta get to the death route without dying. Or do weird shit like this. What I just did there. Yeah. Yeah. But then what are some things that you think declined in the remake? Some of the visuals. Like, like I know... Like in Crash just... 1, there was on Generator Room where Cortex has weird screens, which are also present. Uh, this is way down the line, but you'll see it in the, the final boss of this game. They use those same screens. Where it's just Cortex, like it's just a series of images and it looks very amateurish. Generator Room. The perfect example of the visual issue was definitely the lighting in these war rooms and the way these hologram messages are presented. It's more awkward. Yeah, it is. It kind of feels in the original. What do you think of Endrio's voice actor in this game? I'm fine with him. I like this version of Rio. Yeah, it's it's different from the like most characters like now sound like pretty faithful re like recreations of the original, but Endrio sounds totally different. But I'm fine with that. But I could see why some people might not be. Because like. Rio was my favorite part about Mind of Newton and the fact they brought back the voice actor for this. It's just a win. 
Yeah, that was weird how, like, Brio, like, you know, does, like, that laugh, and then his face just, like, returns to normal and just stares forward at Crash and then disappears. Like... He's so hammy in this version, though. That happens a lot in this version, where the face is just returned to yeah. normal before the recording Yeah, like, ends. it happens in all of Coco's cutscenes. Oh, I'm glad Coco has a fucking not-shitty voice actor in this game. Although I think I already meant brought that up. Going back to that, huh? Yeah. Retreading old ground. Anyway, Andrew, it's your oh, turn. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, yeah. PS1 versus PS4. What's well, better? I, li I like that the remake doesn't have a shitty save system. Like Crash for in Crash 1's case? Because Crash 2 and 3 was fine, it just didn't have auto-saving. Yeah. 1 had a really weird way of saving the game. Hmm. Other than that, I don't know, I feel the same way, kind of 50-50. See, here's the thing, my, like, I guess, I've grown to really like Crash 1, like, since I did my segment with Pat, because that was recorded, like, I want to say, like, a month or two ago at this point. Like, for, for viewers, you just saw that, like, a week ago. But, for, you know, like, us recording, that was a few months ago, like... As evidenced by our talking about the Spyro remake before it was announced, like, he was saying, like, we were both saying, like, I don't know if it's gonna come out, and, you know, well, as it turns out, it did. We'll talk about that soon. But, uh, yeah, you know, like, even since, like, since recording that part, I've grown to like Crash 1 more, like, even more now. Uh, in Crash 1, like, the thing is, the save system in that game, it's weird, but I'm fine with it, because I feel like it's not, like, it's, it's not that big a deal. Like, I, like, it doesn't get that much in my way, like, just... When I tend to play the game, like, it's not an issue for me, like... It's, like, it's awkward, obviously, but it's not bad. It doesn't ruin that game, you know? It's, like, it's still, it's still fine, like, you know? Like, to me, it, it, it's not that big a deal, like, the save system. Because, like, you know, the bonus rounds in that game are plentiful, like, you know, you'll get them on, like... You know, you have a chance to do it on every level, you know? And you, you could save after every gem... You know, after every, like, item you get, you save, basically, you know, it's just, like, between the levels. It's, it's fine. It's, like, you know, you don't have to re- you, you, you tap, like, you know, you don't have to replay a lot, you know. That, that's what I found anyway. Yeah, Unless I, you do, like, one level at a time. I didn't I really like having to replay levels over if I decided to, like, quit and come back. That was a bit annoying. Uh, I don't know, I guess it was, like, because I, I, I guess it's just, you know... My way of looking at it is, like, get good, you know? Like, that that's the way I look at it. Because I, I, I didn't have a... Didn't have an issue with it. Like, it was, you know, like, in re... Like, playing it recently, I never really had that big a deal with the save system. Although, I mean, obviously the remakes is preferable. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, it's bad that the remake changed that, because it's, you know, good. It's, a, it's an improvement, but, like, the original problem wasn't that big. Like, I think people sort of, you know over-exaggerate how, how, you know, dramatic that was. You know, like, oh, the save system just ruined that game. I really don't think so. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, like, the game is still, like, it holds up really nicely. Just an annoyance that they remedied in the remake. Yeah, which was good. But then I think, and I don't want to talk about it too much, although, I'll, you know, I could say plenty about Crash 2's case as well, that there was a lot that they improved, but there was also, there was also, I think, they fixed, you know, some problems, but introduced new problems. I would say, for Crash 2, uh, the, my, my biggest issue is, like, lack of polish. The way I did it is, you will see, after, when I, uh, when I, like, cut, you know, like, into each level, because I cut out the load screens, in Crash 1, every level will, like, you know, like, smoothly fade in. You know, you'll, you'll fade into every level. But in Crash 2 and 3, you'll just, like, you'll just pop into the level. Like, the load screen finishes and there's no fade in. Like, you just, it's like right there. You know, it's like instant transmission from Dragon Ball Z Abridged. It's just, it's right there. It just shows up, you know. Like, with no fade in. It's really weird. There's a lot of weird little, like, visual quirks like that. It's like, you know, I get the sense that this game may have been rushed. I don't know. It yeah, still turned out great. Definitely. definitely the most polish. Yeah, it still turned out great. I, I but I hope I hope the Spyro remake doesn't have these problems. Because that would be rather unfortunate. It probably you know, like the would. I'd say the biggest, like one of the biggest hurdles of this game is its load screens because they're fucking useless. Like, there's no reason that the load times in this game are that this long. You know, 
Like, a perfect example is, and I think I spoke about this with Pat already, but I'll bring it up again here, is in Crash 3, you go, you know, you do a time trial, you go to the very end of the motorcycle level, and just before you press, cross the finish line, you pause and restart time trial, and there's no load screen. But you cross the finish line, don't get an item, so then it will prompt you to replay the level, you press yes, and then it initiates a load screen. Like, why? Like, what the fuck is the point of that load screen? It isn't loading anything. Like... That is kind of strange. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, weird things like that, where the load times in this game are pretty long, you know? It's, like, about, like, I want to say it's, like, 10 seconds, like, a little less than 10 seconds or something like that each load screen, which doesn't sound like that big a deal. There's an example of that pop-in if you saw, like, you just, like, just show up right in the level immediately. Mm -hmm. Also not being able to skip the intro. Oh yeah, that that's annoying. That's like kind of odd. Activision it's presents Crash Bandicoot, a smashing blast from my ass. Yeah, but it's a, uh, it's gay. What is it? I was. What do you think of Lex Lang's uh like, you know, doing the intro? I was saying I like me and Paul were cut, sort of in agreement about this. I don't I don't really like it. Like he doesn't sound as good as Clancy Brown. Like he's fine otherwise, you know. Wait, when did I say that? Remember you were saying like you didn't like the way he sounded in that intro in the in the game's opening. Oh, I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said it sounded funny. Oh, well, I don't like it's it. It's weird. Like I don't hate it. It's just weird. I think it sounds like shit. But that's just me, I guess. I, but I can see why Lex Lang did the intro because that's what Clancy Brown did in the original intros. He just sounds awkward, you know. I think Clancy Brown's delivery in the original is better. Well, because I, I think Cortex is more serious. Which I like. I think, yeah. Serious I think and sinister. The Cor yeah, Cortex's original, like, voice, like, you know, he sounded more sinister because I think his characterization was different. Like, they had a different idea of what Cortex was supposed to be. Like, in Wrath of Cortex and then Twin Sanity especially, that abomination, they, they really changed Cortex's cow to make character to make him more of, like, sort of like a bumbling idiot. Whoa, you hey know? now. Hey now. That, what? Be careful, I wouldn't go calm that game the worst thing ever made by humans? I, I wouldn't be go saying that about you insanity. Why? Why? The the the, the right-wing death squads are gonna come after me? A surprising amount me. of people really like that game. And they're all... You, you can tell them that they're all good people. And I respect them, but disagree with what they have to say. Anyway... It's an important thing to say, that's his opinion. It's not our opinions. You're taking responsibility for my opinion. I mean, I don't think... I ain't taking responsibility for shit! I don't think it's very well, good either, but still. Yeah. I wouldn't call it an abomination. It is, though. But, whatever. We're, th this is not to insanity, so I'm not gonna get into that. But basically, Cortex's, char Cortex's character was co sort of changed to think... To be more like a bumbling, like, fool, you know? A goof. Like a foolish, like, goofy scientist, you know, which is what Lex Lang represents, but... I think Cortex originally was supposed to be a lot more sinister. Like, I like with the original Cortex, I was saying, I get the impression, if, if anyone is familiar with Courage the Cowardly Dog, he's similar to the character uh, Dr. Jalost. You remember? Where he's like, Dr. Jalost being the, you know, the, the scientist that is like, you know, always depressed. You know, like, I got the impression that Cortex was sort of, you know, similar to that. You know, where he was just sort of bitter and angry at everybody. You know, not that he was, like, a truly evil, like, horrible person, but he was sinister, and he was, you know, just sort of bitter and angry, but in, now he just seems like an idiot. Engine, come here, Engine. Give me a hug. Oh, rat. Oh, rat. This is so embarrassing. Yeah, but, you know, I got, I got the impression, like, Cortex was kind of like that, but nope. The thing is, he became a bit more goofier when Uka Uka took charge of everything. Just kind of shoved to the sidelines a bit. He still felt kind of his confidence. He still felt True, kind but of he sinister still, I, in the third game. Yeah, like he still was a little sinister in Crash Three. Like obviously not as much as Crash One and Two and Three, but I think you know the difference between him in in Crash Three and the difference between him in Twin Sanity is still huge. You know, it's still a big difference. Or even between him and... Although I don't really remember a lot of Wrath of Cortex, even though I made a unnecessarily long video about it, which sucks, and you shouldn't watch. But, uh... It definitely came off Here's one thing that I like a lot about this. Here's one thing I like a lot about this remake is... There's one thing I could say that I'm just so glad is... 
all of the boxes now like those you know bouncy crates it's four uh, no it's five jumps instead of ten because like, yeah i could definitely agree with that yeah doing well, ten is annoying it was five in the third game yeah it took them like, two they, games to yeah. catch up <laughs> Yeah, but now, uh, now they're all together, and that's better. See, good design choices. I also like the little that the platforms make when they fly away. I guess I just wasn't listening because I didn't hear that. Do they make I, a sound effect? I agree. Yeah, the little sound they make when they're moving. Do I like that. that sound. Interesting. Hey. Cause I, I didn't hear it. I'll turn it up and I'll listen in the next A one. visual thing I like in some of the levels in Crash 2 is they changed like the lighting in a sense. Like like the level we were just in, that was the sunset. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah I... they they changed they they made like some levels at different parts of the day. I like that. Yeah, now like you this can... one's like kinda nice bright. Touch. This one well although like this one was true in, in the original as well, but, like, they they changed some, like, the pits was not sunset originally. You know, like, so the when, pits was not dark. How do you trigger that animation where he, like, falls over himself? I, I, I don't get it in this in this run, but, like, I don't get it in the footage of this, but I, I don't know if it's even, like, I, I don't know if it's there. Paul was telling me that it is, but I have no clue. It is that. You ha I think, how do you do it? I think it the boulder, I think the boulder has to be, like, really close to you. Yeah. For it to trigger. I'm just such a pro that that never happened. Yeah, it's like really easy to outrun the boulder though, so you're, you're never gonna get it most of the time. At least that was for me. Yeah, I, I never got it. Like, I can't, I can't recall ever getting it. It happens more frequently in the original. So here's something that I wanted to talk about, was the music in this game. I think Crash 1's music, most of Crash 1's music is worse in this game than it was in the original. But I would actually say I like most of Crash 2 and 3's music. In fact, I would say most of it is better. While I still like, you know, I still love the originals, obviously. But like, this, like a lot of these songs just sound better, in my opinion. Like this one, uh, like all the, the, you know, the boulder level music in this, it sounds great. Like, I love what they did with that. But, you know, most of Crash 1's music is worse, in my opinion. Because I think what it is, is Crash 2 and 3 are stylistically very different from Crash 1. Like, Crash 1 is a lot more straightforward, where, you know, you have just, like, three different level types. You know, jungle, uh, like, ancient ruins, lab. You know, you have, like, those three sort of, you know, like, you have those three sections of the game, and everything feels really connected, while Crash 2 and 3 have, like, all of these different level styles, like, men melded together. You're like, you know, in one level you're in the Arctic, and then in another, you know, you're on these ancient ruins, and then in another you're being chased by a boulder in a forest, you know, so it's, like, sort of all over the place, if you get what I mean? I think we were talking about this. The music's yeah. more, like, atmospheric in the first game. Yeah, exactly, because Compared Crash 1 this. stylistically is very different yeah. from Crash 2 and 3. It's it's more edgy. Uh, so Crash 2 and 3, the music is a lot more... And me and Pat, I realize, we talked about this as well. It's 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 a lot more melodic in Crash 2 and 3. As opposed to in Crash 1. Uh, but Crash... But they changed a lot of things in Crash 1, I think, to make it similar to Crash 2 and 3. You know? Since, yeah. It doesn't really You know, work. it's two games against one. Uh, but I don't like a lot of the changes that they made. Like, Crash 2 and 3, the music for the most part wasn't really changed a lot. But in Crash 1, there were some, like, songs that were completely changed. Like a random organ part that they added in Slippery Climb, it's, it's really strange. Generally, the more melodic the song, the better it is in the remake. That's the way I look at it. And if a song is, like, supposed to be atmospheric, it gets fucked up in the remake. Do we want to... What do you think of Ripperoo's new laugh? It's fine. Like, he's the only my, my boy Kyle gets triggered by it, but he's the only boss from the first game to like make a reappearance in this one. Yeah. And I believe it was two and the third that make reappearances. Hmm. Which is interesting. I mean, technically you can count Embryo. 
Oh yeah. Even though he doesn't return as a boss. Recurring character. Well, that was easy. Yeah, he got fucked. Also, bosses now have their own doors. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just like in Crash 3, they have their own button. They replace the load and save screen. Which is weird because in Crash 3, the the screen is just there. It doesn't really do anything. It's where you it's where you meet Coco. But it's like that's it. It's all it does. It's kind of strange. Computer screen for the uh, time machine. Kind of makes sense. Computer screen. I think there's a line in this game for Cortex that talks about using the platform to get to the next boss. And so they like st oh, yeah. static to cut it out. Oh yeah, that's a weird thing that I remember in Crash 3 he goes, go back to the, to the like center of this warp room and save your progress if you wish. And it's like, what? It's been saving the whole time. So what are you talking about? Feels like there were some last. Whoa! What the hell are you there. doing? Anyway, we're back in this level because we're actually using this to get to the secret. Because Crash Two had quite a few secrets, which is a shame that these weren't present in Crash Three. I also want to just talk about this game in general, like not just the remake. Like I want to talk about the original, and I guess with like something I liked a lot was uh, I really liked how sort of Crash Two is very cryptic. You know. I think, technically speaking, Crash 2 is the best Crash game. Although, my favorite is going to be Crash 1. I still think the most cryptic secret is still in Crash 3, using that one pterodactyl. That is dumb as fuck. How are you supposed to know that? Just fucking memes, I don't know. It's, it's really yeah, dumb. Yeah, that one was really there. Alright, alright. Is that for, like, completion, too? Yeah, you have to do that. You have to do that to get to Agapus Rex. If you're not aware of those of two, two secret, secret levels, and yeah. you get everything else, you're just like, well, what am I missing here? Are yeah. we sure there's no, like, indicator for that? No. Uh, what is it? They added they some did. indicators for secrets in, in the remake, but they're still, they still didn't add one for that. That's still the same cryptic shit that it was in, in the original. The indicator really for the alien sign in Crash 3 is really clever one, and pretty funny, to show the birds flying into it. Yeah, so it's like, oh it's hey, flat. you do this. I never went for the relics in 3, so... It's not worth it. It's just if you want to say that you're cool like me. Yeah. Because I am cool. I'm not a I cool boy. Pussy. No, you are not. Can we talk about how badly they fucked up the ice physics in this? They fucked them up. There, we talked like, about it. Yeah. No, I don't know, they were fine in the PS1 version, and they really, like, messed it up here. It's it's weird. It's very awkward. They had a really good amount of momentum in the original. It's... For some reason, you can completely, like, halt your momentum in this version. But sometimes you won't. It's, it's weird. It makes There's a lot of weird ways that it acts as well, like, if you try to, in the beginning of that death route, there's a part where, like, there's, like, a little, the ice makes, like, a little ramp, so you need to sort of get some speed to go up it. In Crash 2, you could slide and then jump, and you'd go, you know, like, flying pretty far, but in this, if you slide and then jump, you just slide up the ramp and then jump in place. And I don't know how they did that. It makes, uh, cold, hard crash... The death a nightmare. Bat. Yeah, basically. Which was already a it was already a pain in the ass on PS One, and now it's even worse. Yeah, that that one I think took me the longest to do. Although it's been a while since I've recorded all these because I recorded all these before I rec recorded any of the commentary, and then I, although I think I was finishing Crash Three as I was talking to Pat. As we were doing our part, I mean to say. And then I recorded my part with Pat 1. With Pat. <laughs> with Pat 1. I recorded my part with Pat, which was a while ago. And now we're doing Crash 2. And then Crash 3 I want to do soon, too. Yeah, but anyway. This, this death route is shitty. It's like the first one they did. It's 
pretty easy. No, it's just long. Yeah, easy and long. I like the little after image Crash does when he does a slide jump. He also does that when uh, running as well. It's nice. Yeah, it's a good little, it's a good touch. Nice. I think it, it it like helps to like indicate like hey you're going fast right now. You know like this is a good technique to use for the time trials. You know. How are the time trials in this game? Uh, some of them are a fucking pain in the ass. Some of the levels in Crash 2 and most of the levels in Crash 1 aren't built for time trials. Yeah. I, there so was a point where awkward. I was trying to get, like, the Platinum Relics for Crash 1. Oh, I wouldn't even bother. I think in I... This, in this, I only go for the gold. I don't, like, I and I got all the gold relics. I just don't bother with the Platinums because it's a waste of time. I think I Platinumed up to, like, uh... Road to Nowhere. Jeez, did you even did you even platinum Native Fortress? Yes, I think that shit's so. hard as fuck. Yeah, how'd you do that? Ooh, I haven't. I think it's just that level and it, it destroyed Stormy my hands. I'm pats on. I I can't play Stormy Ascent still. I don't know why. I bought it and I just can't play it. Stormy Ascent really isn't that hard, to be honest. I just can't play it, so I wouldn't know. Mm. So I didn't. It's not in the footage. This is just like I bought it, and someone you could. If you want to, if you want to leave a comment in this web zone, I'll take a look at it. You want to leave a comment on this Reddit post? I mean, it's I'll whatever. Say, I'll, yeah. It's not a big deal. If you if you comment and tell me what's wrong, Paul won't look at it, and I won't either. And then yeah, I'll look at it. I care. Maybe you'll tell me why the Sissy, fuck I bought I really the god. I bought the level because I because I didn't get it when it came out. You know. Yeah. Does it cost it. money now? Yeah, it does. It's like three bucks or something like that. That's I think gay. It's like, yeah. Three bucks. Yeah, I I uh, I fucking bought it, and just like can't play it. So, okay, whatever. It's like I haven't bothered to give it a try again because I just don't care. I like how you cancelled out your little fall animation there. Yeah, that little there. animation. That, I almost died. That's the one weird thing I've noticed with the remake, as opposed to the original, is Crash has a tendency to slip off, like, ledges. Uh, supposedly it's got something to do with the hitboxes. Yeah, they're... Yeah, his, his hitbox is rounded now. They're pill-shaped. They got little, like... Like his, like his feet. Like, the edges aren't, you know, they're not rectangular anymore. So like it makes it really people easy for women to vote. It threw me out. That's, yeah, it's weird. That's why, uh... <laughs> I was playing Crash 1 recently on PS... I've been playing all the Crash PS1 games recently. And, it like, road, like playing Road to Nowhere felt, like, so refreshing. It felt so... And, like, the high road, that felt so great playing on PS1, because it's so much better. Like, it, it really does feel a lot better. They, they fucked those levels up pretty bad. Uh, Road to Nowhere actually... I ended up getting pretty used to that in the remake. You're weird. You kind of get a feel for the physics to a point where making the jumps is actually pretty easy. But it differs pretty greatly from the original to the remake. They should, for the Spire remake, just remake Spire 1 and then include cutscenes from 2 and 3. You know, I think I think everyone would appreciate that. You know, like the King of Hearts remake, they should just do that. Just put cutscenes. So how do you guys? So how do you guys feel about the Spyro remake? Because I'm pretty optimistic. I played the Spyro games again recently, and what I have to say is, Spyro one is not my favorite game. Don't like that's just not. I don't care. And uh, what is it? What was the other thing I wanted to say? I really like Spyro one. Sure. Yeah, I like Spyro 1 a lot, too, but it's, it's like, it's like some, like, it's just like, you know, like, take a day out and just play it, complete it, and then put it down for, like, you know, a few months. Like, that, like that's how I feel about that game. Spyro 2 and 3 are more interesting. Spyro 3 is fucking whack. Like, I like that game, but it's whack as fuck. Spyro 3 is my first game. Well, my first Spyro game, and it's my favorite. You still haven't played Spyro 2, though. I know. You have to play that soon. 
Heathen. Well, I will, thanks to the trilogy. No, play on PS1 first. Before you play the remake, play on PS1. Because, I like, they're probably going to end up fucking it up somehow. Like, it's probably going to end up with a bunch of weird problems. Like, if someone's never played the Crash game, would you recommend the trilogy to them, or would you recommend the original? I would recommend the original. I would say, like, play it on PS1. Like, if you if you really, really care, like, if you don't give a shit, like, if you just want to play the game and just, like, you know, for an afternoon and then not touch it again, it's like, yeah, get the remake. But, like, if you, like, you know, want the true experience, I would say you want you should play the original. Because it's better. It's just, like, you know. I'd say whatever is, like, the easiest for you to obtain. Which would definitely be the remakes. Well, I mean, obviously most people would have an easier time with the remake. But, like, I I have both copies. If someone came to my house and it's like, hey, I want to play Crash, I would, I would take out the PS1 copy. I wouldn't bother with the remake. The remake is nice. Like, I feel like the remake is like, oh, if you like the originals, it's like, you know, like a nice treat. You know, it's nice to like revisit the old games. And I, you know, I really like seeing the updated visuals. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess, XD. There's some ugly ass whales. They make weird sounds. Nuke the whales. Dead whales can't wave back, and the Japanese are to blame. Anyway, it's the These levels that. feel pretty nice in the remake. Yeah. The yeah. animation, that's the one thing, is the animation of, like, Polar running is kind of weird. You know? It's it's like, look at look, look at how he looks when he runs. He looks really weird. It, like, it felt awkward for me, you know? Mm, yeah, I noticed. I remember you those know, boxes and, were an issue. They were an issue in the in, on PS1 as well. They were harder on PS1. I think that's because of the hitboxes. Do we want to talk hit about boxes, the hitboxes hit for this? My hitboxes. My hitboxes? What was that? Like, just the, just the fucking nature of some of the hitboxes in this game. Did we already discuss that? Did we? Like, yeah, yeah the pill, his pill-shaped shoes. Oh, hey, Barrett. Here's yeah, the, there's, uh, there's the pill-shaped shoes, and there's also just, like... I don't know. Oh, some, of the weird things? some of the enemies' hitboxes just. Some of the enemies. Some of the enemies. Some of the enemas? The coffee enemas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't know. It, like, the thing is, I, I like the remake a lot, but it has a lot of problems. And to me, there's, like, a lot of, like. It lacks a lot of polish. From, now, from what we know, though. And again, you know, Spire Remake will come out and, you know, potentially prove all we're saying is wrong. But from what I know, like, more time is, is being spent on the remake of Spire than on Crash. Like, Crash and Spire's remakes were in development for roughly, like, you know, around the same time. Is that true or not? Apparently, yes. They both start it, Because it's coming out this year. Time. Yeah, I hope, I hope it's good. Like, you know... I'm happy with how the Ensign Trilogy came out, but it has a lot of problems, and, you know, I would have given it, like, you know, a few more months. To be fair. there are a lot of problems with this game, like, you know, just general, you know, downgrades. Like, I think Crash, like, you know, Crash 1 probably took it the hardest, but that's just my weird opinion. I know you guys don't agree. Yeah, you're weird. Yeah. There's probably a lot more work that would have to be done for a Spiral remake compared to... Crash yeah, because Bandicoot. the games are way bigger. Yeah. Because Cra Crash's games are older. Like, Crash 1 is really short. If you're good. Same with uh, Crash Pooh and P. They're, they're very short. But, they're uh, also Spyro very linear. Spyro games, Spyro, Spyro 3 especially, are long. Like, I remember me and Paul were talking about this, and it's like... Or Paul and I, I should say. Paul, we were talking about this, remember? Like, Spyro 3 is fucking gigantic. It's you know? huge. It's like they fit so much fucking content on one disc, and I don't know how the hell they did it. It's like, you know, Magic. Metal Gear, Final Fantasy, they needed two discs, but Spyro and Abe's Odyssey, I mean Exodus, you know, like, they, they, they all needed two discs, but fucking Spyro 3 did it in one, and it's fucking massive. It's like, there's so much fucking content in that game. And apparently Spyro 3 was rushed? Which is really great. Well, yeah, definitely. I, I don't want to talk too much about Spyro. Uh, it's Crash Town, not Spiral Town. Yeah. No, because I actually may be having 
Or maybe not, but I might be having a guest that's a very big Spyro fan, so... We'll be, uh, we'll probably be end up talking more about Spyro, uh, when it comes to Crash 3, I want to say, because, well, I won't really get into it right now. And I love, I love the, the remade version of this song. I think they did a great job. Very I'm nice. still, I'm still running my Smash tournaments, you know, Geeked Up Smash, and on my, on Town and City, I have this song playing. So, <laughs> you know. That's, that's good. Yeah. Oh, and then also the the music for what's the other fucking level? Uh, what is it? Oh yeah, the music for Hang Eight as well is on there. Semi favorite. And I have it so that when it goes down to like time, like you know, it does the song loops twice and then it plays the death rap version. Hmm. So like you know, in singles that's like you know like two thirds of the way into the match, and for doubles that's like you know halfway into the match. It's pretty cool. I really but like yeah. the uh, what they did with Pack Attack, the the uh, song for that. Yeah, it was fine. It was, very, it was pretty faithful to the original. Like, not much has changed, you know. Some people were saying that they preferred to have con like Josh Mansell's uh, pre-console mixes, you know. Uh, which like I'm fine with the remade music in Crash Two and Three. Like, I don't have an issue. Uh, but Crash One, I think that probably would have been the best idea. You know. Because yeah. I really think the Crash 1 had some major downgrades in some of the songs. Like, like Generator the Boulder, Room being the one of the levels. best examples. Yeah, that one's bad too. I uh, didn't no, think Generator is... Room was bad. It just... Uh, it didn't really fit the level at that point. No, it sounded way different. It didn't even sound like the same song. Well, yeah, it sounded different. Cause like there's that part with like those chimes where it's like dong dong ding dong like that part was from what I know like because it's present in the original if you listen closely but it's in like a different key or something like that like I, I don't I don't know much of like you know the music terminology sewer level if I had Steve with me who's gonna be commentating Crash Three with me he'd be able to talk about that because he knows all about that music theory shit but we don't got Steve he's dead he's been dead yeah rest in peace. This is a pretty damn clean sewer. sewer. Those robots are doing a good job. Yeah, no. Scrubbing bubbles. I think Crash is gonna Crash is gonna kill him and uh, make the sewer all dirty. Why do you want to kill them? They're cleaning the sewers. Yeah, I you know I really good I job. really yeah I really do wish that you know they spent more time on this game. You know maybe like to have like add extra features. You know like one thing I was gonna say is maybe include like some alternate you know like alternate things like oh you know you kill those robots and then the sewers get all dirty or like i think the best would be if a crash team racing remake ever comes out there is a uh you know like an alternate timeline where papu papu does you know eats enough big breakfast and defeats oxide that would have been nice to see you know maybe for the remake if that does happen yeah papu beats eats enough big breakfast and he does it do you think a ctr remake would go over well not with me, bitch! Yeah. It, it... I wouldn't trust Vicarious Visions. Like, I don't care how much time, you know. There's the some is... there's some, there's some wounds that time cannot heal. And Crash Nitro Kart is one of them. Including my shitty review of that game. So, I hate that game, though. See, I think, at first, Activision saw Crash as a risk. You know, to invest money in. We're in but the age that... of the remake now, though. But yeah. now that... The success has pretty much blown up in their faces. We were saying that years ago, give. though. Well, yeah, but... Well, now that Crash is such a big success, they can put, you know, a bigger budget in the next game. They can milk yeah. that cow till it's dry. Big milkers. I would like to see an actual new Crash game. Oh, that's definitely gonna happen. A poo Crash game. I was thinking, it's like, I mean, like, I don't know. I would assume another Crash game comes out, but I haven't seen many games take that next step. Like, I'm seeing a lot of remakes, but I'm not seeing a lot of, you know, like, you know, next steps. I think we're finally starting to see it, though. Like, the only exception I could think of is Mario Odyssey, where they had a return to form, like a game similar to Mario 64 style, but, you know, like a new game, not a remake. You know, but Sonic Mania as well, like, now it's getting new content. But, you know, Sonic Mania was, like, a soft 
Like, I would say, you know, it, obviously it's a new game, but it also is, you know, it plays it very safe because it uses a lot of the same levels. You know, there's only four new levels in the whole in the whole game. Like, the rest of them are returning levels, you know? Granted, all they have they have all new gimmicks and stuff like that, you know? But I haven't seen many games... Like, Medieval's getting a remake. Oddworld got a remake, you know? Like, although Oddworld's got that new game, but, you know, I haven't seen any of the new games drop yet, you know? So we'll have to see how a lot of, you know, series make that next step, you know, if they can, you know? It's gonna happen with Crash. Like, it's... It's a huge success. Like, it's still in the charts, performing really well. And there's still the Xbox the and Switch and PC version... Oh yeah, that's coming to out. Come out, and that's probably going to be a big success as well. That's so funny because that was that was there. announced that that was announced before uh, before me and Pat did our video. It's going to be funny watching that back because that was recorded like I want to say almost two months ago at this point, like before this. I could actually check exactly when that was recorded, but it's pretty funny. It was like you know, like we were talking like, oh, apparently it's coming to Switch, and I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, it's coming to even to the, even to the Xbox uh, Juan. So that's pretty cool. One PC Switch. That means we get Crash for Smash finally. I'm gonna bring up real quick. It could happen. What the fuck was with Crash hanging in Wrath of Cortex? Why was he so slow? Oh God! <laughs> Why was he so hey, slow? Hey, wait, 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 hold up, hold on. Uh, what's up with Crash and Wrath of Cortex? Period. I mean, yeah. Good point, but stop playing with my sister. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, uh... Did you guys figure out right away that you could, like, press circle to hoist yourself up yeah. while you're hanging? I didn't know that for the longest time until I got to that one uh, secret area where it's required. Well, it's very funny. It looks really funny on PS1. He's like, oh! He just gets up. Um, in this, it looks, like, better. Oh, hey. <laughs> what? Cortex, fix your sky. Yeah. He sounds like you, Paul. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, but, uh, what is it now? If you saw right there, that was Coco. Coco is playable in, in all three games. And their explanation is that she time-traveled back from Crash 3 to, to meet up with you. It's kind of strange. Help her big brother, and that's adorable. Yeah. Best adorbs. sibling that's ever. Totes adorbs. Yeah, but uh, I thought it was weird Coco's inclusion in this game, and I kind of would have preferred that they either not do that. I mean, like it's like I don't know. I don't really care about it. In Crash Three, I play that whole game as Coco, except for the levels where you have to play as Crash. But uh, stop playing with his sister. What are you saying? I mean, stop playing with his sister. I think it's harmless enough. Yeah, I don't think... I'm not a big fan of, uh... Would you rather I'm, have it like, like this, or like in Wrath of the Cortex? I mean, I'd rather have her not at all than, like, Wrath of the Cortex, but... I would have rather that she be a little different, that they change some things about her, you know, because she's just a clone of Crash, but, like, an inferior one, too. There's, like, a few weird attributes that were changed. Like, most noticeably in Crash 1, her jump is slightly lower... So, Wait, really? like, very slightly lower. The hitboxes are different, too. Like, on her feet, so that that's, you know... That's, like, a weird thing. That's odd. Yeah, it's strange. I thought the hitboxes were, like, the exact same. No, they're slightly different. And her jump is slightly lower, so, like, one level, I want to say in Crash 1, it's... What's the name of the level? I'm trying to remember what it is. I don't remember. It's one of, like, the temple levels. Jaws of Darkness. There's a jump in there that's really, really hard for Coco to make. But it's very easy for Crash to make. It's very strange. And then also, her, uh, her climbing animation is slightly faster. So it's weird. There's, like, a few weird, like, little attributes that are changed. Yeah. That's kind of odd. But that's it. But it, but I don't think any of that was intentional. Because from what I understand, she was like put in at the last second as a playable character. You know? Like, she was playable in Crash 3, that. and that was it, and then they added her. But I would have preferred they added, like, more abilities for her. Like, I thought something that would have been really cool would be... 
you know, since she's traveling back in time to meet you, like, she retains some of the abilities from Crash 2 and 3. So in Crash 1, you could play that game with the Crash 2 abilities, and you could play Crash 2 with the Crash 3 abilities. And that might break some of the levels, but, you know, I feel like that would be fun, and maybe they just, you know, like... I don't know, like, fix some shit in those levels so it's not as broken. You know, that would have been nice, but... I don't know. You know, like, the game was, you know, obviously... It, it kind of shows that it was rushed, you know? So it, it's, it's a shame. I mean, they announced that she was playable, like, pretty close to the release. Uh, E3. Yeah, so, you know, the game, I, I obviously feel like it was pretty rushed. Yeah, that's you know, it's, pretty obvious. Yeah, which is a shame. I would have rather I would have rather waited. Hope hopefully the reason that Spyro has taken a while to come out. Uh, so they can get if if it's people. yeah, if it's been in the same time, if it's been in development as the same time as Crash, uh, you know, is so that it can be less shitty. Because this game I like it a lot, but it's a whack. There's some there's some serious whackness here. Oh boy, a secret. And well, that's where the you secret didn't brings get me. the lives. No, I don't care. It's hard. It's really not worth it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a lot easier on PS1, I feel like. Because because of crashes generally being like really really tight controls. That's the it, one thing is that his controls in this game are very 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 tight. Which causes some problems. His I feel momentum like. is a bit different, it, or his lack of momentum. He has no momentum in this game at all. Like if you stop holding the stick forward, he stops moving, and it sometimes yeah. makes it, it. Sometimes it feels like you're pushing him forward rather than you know actually like you have to like hold the stick forward to make sure he keeps going because if you let go, he doesn't stop. You know, Crash One was very sort of fluid. Like, it was very sort of slippery in that sense, and then Crash Two, and then Crash Three especially. You know, like were a little better. You know, Crash 3 was probably the best, because Crash, like, carried some momentum when he jumped. But then, you know, was very smooth, like, very tight on the ground. So it was, it was sort of like the best of both. There of course, Crash some, 3 had other problems. There are some jumps where, like, you have to hit the, uh, bounce box immediately. You have to be going in one direction once you hit the, the uh, jump box. Yeah. Like, in Crash, it. in Crash 1... It's it's probably the worst. Like dude jumping on the turtles in, in fact, uh, the high road. In this bonus round, you could have like jumped from those boxes to the question yeah, mark yeah, yeah. boxes. Yeah, you could just ju you could just carry a momentum like that. But in this, like, nope, you can't do that. Although, from what I know, that's also due to the fact that Crash actually falls slightly faster in this game as opposed to the original. Yeah, I don't know if that's got something to do with the frame rate. Like, maybe I don't know. It's strange. It's definitely strange. It's not going to be capped to 30 on PC, is it? I don't think so. Better not Ooh, be. It's that's... not capped to 30 on this. What was the original game's frame rate? 30. Right? Was it? I don't remember. I feel like it was 30. Like, I, like, I mean, I'm thinking, like, off the game I played most recently, which was Crash Team Racing, and that game certainly does not run at 60 FPS. Yeah. That game runs at, like, 15 half the time, as much as I love it. This is one weird thing that you'll see with the time trials in this game, is for some reason, it's like... One thing I don't like is the fact that, the, like, the clock keeps running. That wasn't a time trial, but I'm just bringing this up. Is the clock keeps running... When you, what was I trying to say? I think this is plant food now. I want to say, yeah. yeah, because that was air crash before. Seamless transitions. Yeah, boy. Yeah, but I don't, I don't like that. Uh, the clock keeps running when you're in that little area, you know, like that little building that you use to get to the portal. Like, the, I feel like when you get past that door, the time should end. You know. Like a good example is in Crash 3, timing ends, you know, for the for the the tiger levels, you know, timing ends as soon as Coco lands on that platform. You know, so like her that little animation of her cuddling 
Pura is uh, not there. By the way, I want to get your opinion. Is it Pura or Pura? Pura. Andrew? I'd say Pura. Obviously. This kid that attends my Smash tournament says it's Pura and insists it's Pura, and I think he's crazy. It's well, a very, he needs to be a, banned from that store. It's a very obvious good pun. Idea. On Pur, yeah. So, you're talking about there's some, like, annoying kids at your tournament now, which I feel no, is th just... No, this, this kid, this kid, if anybody knows who PK Chris is, that that's him, and no, he's he, he's a good kid. I like him a lot. No, but there there are folks that go there that are gay. It's a result of becoming mainstream, Michael. It's all the normies. Yeah. It's all my normie contestants. You gotta get all those fucking That shit, I'm out. convinced, is, like, fucking impossible. Like, avoiding that piranha plant, that's, like, retarded. Yeah, it was it's always impossible. it was always like that, even in the original. I never got that I part. don't remember in the original. Yeah, in the original. No, like, when I was doing this, I was like, I can't, I need a mask to get past that. It's fucking yeah. impossible. It's weird. It's back, yo. For reals, though. For reals, This though. one's easy to get by. Yeah. Just go around it. Something I've noticed in this game is that the Nitros have a tendency to jump very high, which they don't on the original. Right? Yeah. They did do that in the original? They don't jump that high. It was high rare, the but they did do it. I think I died more to that in happening original? in this game. What? What can happen the in the original? What can happen in, on on PS One is that nitros can jump off of each other, which causes them to jump very high. So that can sometimes happen. Like if you have like a stack of you know like like a big like you know stack of nitro crates, they can jump off each other and bounce very high. But like one nitro crate by itself typically won't jump high enough to hit you. But in this game, you'll jump over a nitro and it'll just jump into you. Yeah, that's kind of bullshit. The only way to be safe is you just got a slide jump. Fuck was that? Talking about Cortex's space station or something. No, I'm so Coco. glad Debbie Derryberry is here and not fucking the tard. Like she, her face just like went back to default as she was zooming I know. out. Yeah, it's a bit awkward. awkward. <laughs> she just in general looks very bad on those cutscenes. Like she looks that fine otherwise. But look at this level. It looks so nice. It does. Oh, like in the no, the, like the, for oh, some reason, like the, like, the in, like the heads and like the the heads in the cutscenes look pretty bad. I don't know why. Like they look fine, like on the actual models. Like Kogo's model looks great. Totes adorbs, if I do say so myself. But in the fucking cutscene, she looks like a like tard. Like I don't even know what to say. She looks ugly. It's just it kind of looks weird because of like the effect they're using. Is that what you think? Which. Doesn't look near as good as the original one. The OG. I mean, it sounds better though, that's for sure. Hey, look. Okay, as it turns out, it is possible to avoid that. But then I'm a dope and I hit the nitros. This one, I just, I just go through it. I just use the. Yeah, it's impossible to get past those. So. You have to kill them first. Yeah. But for, I, I just use a mask and just eat, yeah. eat damage. For speedrunning purposes, just plow right through them with a mask. A mask. Mersk. Oh. oh. Which one are we on now? Uh. See what we're later. Yeah. Oh, it's the lab asses. I like all the, the pun names for the levels. What do you think of the lab assistant's new death screams? Sounds good to me. Because it was all stock yeah. sound effects originally. I, I mean, I liked I liked the stock sounds in the original, but I think these ones sound funny too. Like, uh, I like so Pinstripe's wanting. laugh. He sounds pretty good. Tiny what? sounds good. Tiny sounds very good. What if he doesn't think sound of, like uh, shit? Crash's voice in this game sounds fine to me. I don't have an issue. I know some people do, but I don't care. Yeah, I think I kind of liked the original a little bit more. It just yeah, I think I did too. Sounded funnier to me. I think the best was his voice in Crash Team Racing. He sounded really good there. I just like his little yahoos, his little yay one, yay two, if you know what I mean. 
Skylanders Crash is still Jess Hart, Jess Harnell, if that's how you pronounce his name. Yeah. But he's going for his Titans, like, you know, babbling type of voice. Doesn't he have an Australian accent in the show? In the cartoon, yeah. In the cartoon. Crash is so out of character in that cartoon. What cartoon? The Skylanders Academy cartoon. There's an episode where Crash comes in. Really? And he's like hyper competent. And he speaks fluent Australian English. Australian English. He's got an Australian all, accent. And all the Skylander characters are like gushing over him, like, oh my god, he's so awesome. Is this shit like on YouTube or what? You could probably find Netflix it on or YouTube. YouTube. The fuck, Skylanders Academy? What the fuck is that? I never even heard of that shit. It's a TV series of Skylanders. The fuck? I never even knew this shit existed. Oh well, now, well there's an now you do. When did the, when was it, when did this come out? 2016. Like before the remake or what? Before. Yeah. Well, around the times the Skylanders crash came out. That's weird. Never even knew about that. But guess what? You don't care. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I just thought that was funny that they gave him Australian accent. I'm a lone wolf. You guys, you gotta stick together. I'm like me. Yeah. Remember, Tana's his best friend. His friend? Oh yeah, he's a friend. <laughs> I gotta save my friend. Fresh. That's canonically a cuck. My friend. Uh, he said. He said cuck. Cook. Sounds like a racial slur, even though it's not. I don't think it is. I love that word. <laughs> it just sounds funny. Cuck. Cuck. But yeah, the, porn. the good old spin on the uh, jump oh, boxes. That's still there. Yeah. They was that was that always intentional in the original? Yeah, yeah. It was for, for as far as I could tell. Like with like with this game and with with Wrath of Cortex, they kept it, you know. So I get the feeling that it was impre that it was intentional. You know what they should have brought back? They should have brought back the tiptoe power up. No, it was <laughs> useless. <laughs> you only use it once. In yeah, I remember. Concept. You use it like once or twice. It's like okay. Even when I was a kid, I was like, "This is useless." That's my super body slam. I never made that connection as a kid. Same. It's like, oh cool. I Scrap the card is like the first game I ever played. I was like a little gay baby. I didn't know any better. Yeah, I had the superior Xbox version. The sex box version. Yeah. Nice. They're, they're awesome, uh, hair physics. Oh yeah, he has fur for some reason. Does fur. he have it, like, is that just in the cutscenes, or is that, like, in-game general? I think it's just, yeah. And then in the GameCube version, the water looks really fucking bad. That's weird. Water in this game looks good, though. See? Yeah. It looks time. okay. They you know? good with the water. I feel. This game looks like just okay. Like it looks, it looks nice, but it doesn't look like phenomenal. It just looks okay. That was really weird. That like really high jump that he did there. You see that? Yeah. This level looks like it's fun to speed run. Yeah, it is. Cause that the fastest way to move. It's it's actually one of the few things where like speed running it, it's exactly like the original. You just it's like dash and then jump immediately after. That's the fastest way to move. Epic skips. It's just, like, the best way to do it is, like, dash jump, dash jump as, as, as often as you can. See, like, sometimes you, I do it so fast because I'm a pro, you don't even notice. Go check it out, there's there, Dark Ghost. I love that. Just Spinning fucking launches them. And look at that. Wow, check out that platinum, bitch, I did it. Yeah. Ooh, boy.